what we'll do is we'll start with some brief int introductions first, and then we're just going to have a chat. This will just be a conversation um, with the three of us about, you know, sort of Neil and Neil's background and how he helps folks, and then Louise and Louise's transformation, and um, you know, sort of like the beginning, how it started, and where she is 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 today. And then we'll probably have a chat about some of the bigger themes in the books. And I'll let you guys, like Louise, I'll let you sort of like guide that piece. Um, because, um, you know, all that information came through you from, from Amu. So we hope, like, at the end of the day, this will be uh, very beneficial for folks um, and share some of the information in Louise's books and um, really hope to inspire folks because I, I know just, like, talking to people every single day that everybody is on some journey, right? Everybody in their life is is on some journey. And I, I have experienced people that are at the beginning and some feel like they're at the middle. And I really think that these seven books can sort of be a roadmap, right? And a guide towards folks as they they experience it, experience um, this transformation or, or awakening, so, so it's called. So again, welcome Louise and Neil. Um, and maybe we can start with these short introductions. Louise, do you wanna kick it off for us? Yeah, sure. I'm just noticing I have Ed Greenwood on my screen. That's so Lovely. funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. There's two Ed of us there. <laughs> yeah, I see that now. Yeah. There's, there's Anyways, there. That's pretty so, me too. Oh, no, I haven't. No, yeah. <laughs> so for anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Louise Delaney. And um, yeah, as Ed said, Ed is my husband and Neil is on the podcast too. And Neil is the, the was so like instrumental in my journey. He was a big, big, huge uh part of uh, really um a big pivot like for me in my life and I'm eternally grateful to Neil for that and I'm just you know it's very it's just very special for me today to have this opportunity to chat to, you know um with Neil and with Ed um on our first podcast and to talk about um the experience and uh you know to get more of an insight from Neil as well overall about the Akashic field because I had no idea about the Akashic field. I didn't know what it was, you know, and I found Neil during a time when it was a very heavy time during the lockdown, um, during the global pandemic. And it was a very, very difficult time for everybody. But, you know, I look back on that period and even though I felt stifled and I felt very like it was a heavy time, I also, you know, I look back and reflect on that period and I think, oh my God, like, you know, it was a fantastic opportunity because it was so quiet, everything just went quiet and everybody came back inside and came back to themselves, you know? And it gave me the chance to go inside and to go up. And um, Neil was obviously meant to be in, in my journey. Um, he was absolutely meant to be. And um, he helped me to, to, you know, he facilitated the space and helped me to connect to my guides. And um, the guides came through during that, experience you know we had a really deep meditation and um neil hadn't suggested anything or anything like that but you know it's funny because i'm looking at a piece of artwork on the wall and i remember neil saying that's you you know it's actually i won't i won't show it now but it's actually a man on a on a one of those big bikes you know with the big um penny farthing, old -fashioned, yeah. Pen penny yeah. farthing exactly yeah. and neil said that's you on the penny farthing you're trying to navigate through uh you know, through your journey on something that you're not too comfortable with, really, you know, and it's amazing because I bought that painting years ago, you know, but the painting helped Neil. It was right behind me at the time and it helped Neil to interpret for me um, the whole sort of uh, kind of bigger picture context, you know. So, um, yeah, so it's all I just feel like it's all everything is just all what, what I've learned is that everything is meant to be no matter what is presenting in your life. Everything is meant to be. Everything is sort of happening and unfolding at a pace that even if it's difficult, you know, it's um, it's part of your journey and it's it's an opportunity for you to learn through your journey, you know, while you're here. Yeah. So. um. So, yeah. So, Neil, uh, thank you so much. You know, it's great that we're we have you as a guest on our first podcast. Um, we we were kind of inspired to do the podcast because we know that pe not everyone is into learning. You know, uh, not learning, but reading. Not everyone is into reading and, um, you know, all these books and everything, but not everybody likes reading or they might, they may have learning, not learning, but reading um, um, 
challenges like for example if you're if you're blind for example you can't read you know yeah. um so things like that so we thought look we'll do the podcasts and we'll um we'll take some some things from the books and we'll we'll, we'll just chat about them and and put it out there you know for, for people and um, it just feels very very special that you're the first person to come on to our first podcast and so thank you for joining us <laughs> Welcome. Thank, uh, thank you, you again for that pivotal moment, Neil. I'll be forever grateful to you for that. You know that. I'll never forget that day, Louise. Honestly, when you came out and your your eyes were like wide open and like you were just so filled with light, like I was almost yeah. deleted. It was amazing. Like from that day, yeah. I'll never forget it. Like it was amazing. Yeah, so, I know. And like you know, just just for the benefit of the the people who tune into this today. Like I'm not, I'm not what you'd call your atypical type of person that would, like I, I, you know, okay, from from when I was young, I suppose I had a pull to source, but I didn't know, you know, I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't religious, I wasn't into any of that kind of thing, um, but I always felt there was something more to life, you know, and something more to, to us as humans, you know, living. Yeah living on the earth you know there had to be more than just the physical and just the humdrum of life you know and um and it was really just during that time in 2021 you know it was funny because i put a i put a, um, a thing up on linkedin recently just about the, the books you know because i'm very proud of it i mean yeah. it took me a long time to come to terms with it honestly and um but i'm now in a point at a point where i'm actually I'm, I'm grand i'm very proud of it and I'm, it's an honor to to channel emu and um i put a post up on linkedin anyway and you know I'm, my previous life was corporate you know and i was actually very surprised at the amount of people in the corporate world who commented on it and who said you know that it's good that you found your true calling and it's good that you're inspiring other people and it's good that people can see that life is a journey and that you can move from one part to another you don't have to and it's so even if no matter where you are even if you're still working in corporate or still working in a shop it doesn't matter what you're doing really you have the platform to be able to project your love and share your love with other people and that's what it's all about really you know um yeah, yeah. So, thank you yeah. so now we now we, we want to hear from neil obviously neil like you you had a life before louise and i know like yeah. it's a, quite yeah, an amazing it's, it's journey funny, but um, like Louise uh, said, she wasn't a religious person. Yeah. I was. Yeah, I was uh, Baptist and born again Christian. Yeah, and uh, when I started seeing spirit, it was like crush it, stop yeah. it, stop it. First, the first person I ever saw was when I was, I think, about 14, 15. and um, it was my father. My, yeah. I died when I was seven. Wow! And I was watching the TV with my mother and I had yeah. someone shout Neil and I looked around and went, Oh hi Dad. He was just next to my mum. <laughs> and then when I looked back around my mother's house <laughs> she was so shocked. And uh when my brother came home there was all this talk about you know like what's going on. Yeah. Uh, so it's all all squashed and when I when this, when it came back I had a real crisis of faith and asked yeah. questions about it. This is what I liked working with you, Louise, because you question everything. You're very grounded. Yeah. And you're not like very fairy or anything. And I'm yeah. the same. Even though I do this work, I yeah. question everything. Yeah. And yeah. So I questioned a lot of stuff then and I got the answers that I needed. But that was when I was doing mediumship. Yeah. Um, yeah. People, what people don't see is all the hard graft. Yeah. And people, I see mediums on the TV running about in supermarkets giving messages. I can't turn it off. I can't turn it off. But you can. The difference is, is I went and had training. And yeah. they train you how to turn it off, how to control it all. Um, so as a medium, I was told at the beginning I would work on that level for a while. And then it, there would be a shift and I would go onwards and upwards. Yeah. And um, at that time, I read a book. By about Edgar Casey, who was the original Akashic Records reader in yeah. the nineteen thirties, I think it was. Um, and in one of the books, it said about his journey in hypnosis. So I got um, a friend of mine who was a hypnotist to take me on that journey. Yeah, and it's a little bit successful. I got like some things right about her mother and stuff like that. Um, but then I left it. There was 
it was just like a personal thing I wanted to have a look at. Um, so the, what you're saying there, I, when I came to live, I've done all sorts of work. I don't know how far you want me to go back because I, uh, <laughs> I'm quite yeah. old now. And I've done lots of a lot of things. Lots I've of different worked. things. Yeah. No, you don't look it. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, you don't look it. That's for sure. No, oh, oh my god. But but yeah, no, I think it's interesting for, for listeners. Like go back, go back to Yeah, this is a it's a fascinating journey, Neil. Yeah. I what happened? I'll show you the photo because I prepared this earlier. This yeah. is how it started. Right. Have you got that? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, so this I went to a mind body spirit fair and I had a reading from a medium who told me that I should be sat where she was sat, blah blah blah. Yeah, um, and I was psychic, everything. And then I went and had this aura photograph taken, which I didn't really understand it. So yeah. it took me on a journey to find how who could interpret it for me. And yeah, I met my first teacher, and she said that, um. The four blobs you see were spirit guides, and the line is was a direct link to my third eye. Yeah. And, uh, she would train me, but only for six weeks. And then uh, I had to sort myself out after that. Anyway, I did. I went to uh, the Arthur Finley College, which is a psychic college. And that oh, was like a year later, so you can see wow. spirit. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah, all the colours. Yeah. All the colours, yeah. The colours are amazing, Neil. Yeah. So, Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so I went to this college, and I remember there was a, a, a trans medium there. Yeah. And you, you could book, like, free readings. While you were learning, they, they did, like, readings for you. And uh, I'd never had one before, so I went in to see him. He was uh, from Liverpool, so he normally had a really strong Liverpool accent. But when I went in, he talked like an old Londoner. And he frightened the life out of me. And he <laughs> said, this is his words, we've been waiting for you. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then he said, uh, you're a trans medium. You're going to start your own circle. You have to do this. The people will come to you and you're going to be developed. Right. And it just happened. The people just came. Couldn't believe it. Yeah. yeah. But the way it happened just... I won't go into details, but I got yeah. like four sitters who would sit with me every week. Yeah. yeah. And we didn't know the rules. So we just experimented with different lights. But for seven years, I sat either under a red light, a blue light, or in darkness. And I got to see nothing. I was in trance, very easily put into trance. In fact, so easily. Now, if there's a hypnotist on the TV, I have to. Look away because I'm going to go <laughs> so quickly. You just go straight, yeah. Yeah, I have to like, yeah. So, um, but my sitters, they got a light show, they got something happening in the room, they got things moving, we got all, so all sorts of things. And then it, when I went to the Arctic Bindi College again, they just took another aura photograph and they said, Oh, you, it's called a physical medium. And after that, my face started to change. And it yeah. sounds really creepy. I suppose it is really, but. People have seen it and, uh, you know, yeah. been on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we did that for a while. And then everybody told me there was this voice box getting built. All these other mediums is a voice box. We don't know what it's for. But I would never let the spirit inside me. Yeah. I just had this thing about now. I would never let anything. So maybe that, that's what stopped the voice box. Anyway, I'm telling that because it leads on to later. So I... Uh, I was told by through my teacher uh, to go to Sri Lanka, and this was two thousand and three. So I went on Christmas Eve, went to Sri Lanka, got a kidney infection on the way on the plane, so I was oh. laid up in bed. And Christmas Day, I was ill in this. I was in a bungalow on the beach. Yeah. Um, and the next day, they were moving. It was like an eco to a so. I said, I'm well enough to go. And the tsunami happened. Oh. And we moved out and the tsunami crushed the bungalows. Oh, my God. I, remember oh, my God. I remember that too, yeah. 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 So the thing, the bit I missed out is before that, I was 
I had a lot of contacts all over the UK with being a physical medium. And this guy from Scotland phoned me and uh, he said, oh, are you going somewhere at Christmas? Oh, yeah. He said, you need to take some crystals and you're going to do this ritual. But he couldn't tell me what, but he said, you need 12 crystals. Yeah. Okay. And then the other thing was I meditated and I got told to take children's clothes. So I bought all these kiddies' clothes and took them. And then when we were there on the bus tour, they said, does anybody have any kids' clothes? Because they've all been washed away. And so mm -hmm. that's what it's called. Um, I ended up doing this this yeah. ritual to help, like, souls that have, have gone with the, the tsunami but didn't know where to go to help yeah. them. So very emotional. Oh, very emotional, um, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Following that, I... Um, I, I went to, came to Thailand, but I went on to Vietnam and I went to this ten cent tea ceremony place where they show you how to, what they do is they make the tea, it's all in circles the way they do it, and they serve the tea. And then the, the master, get, you all have to make the tea separately. And after everyone's made the tea, the master of the ceremony reads you. All right. And like, yeah. So, but because I could do stuff like that anyway, I can get someone to pick a flower and I can tell them the life story from the flower. Yeah. But so I give a reading and they were so impressed with it. She said, I want you to come somewhere. So she took me, oh God, it's miles away to this pagoda where they were teaching uh, blind and disabled. And this, this monk was there and got talking to him. Um, and he said to me one day, I mean, it's only three days, but he said to me, it's your destiny to come back here and work with me. Right. And then when I went back to England, I went back to in the corporate world, you know, it's like, and I yeah, just yeah, meet yeah. the yeah. CEO. And at the time, I had a policy to be honest with everybody. So I was kept out of the way if there was anything going on because he didn't want me to tell the CEO. <laughs> but the way it happened, it was just me and him in the room. And, uh, and I was telling him about all this. And I said, no, I need some time off. Yeah. Maybe it's going to be three months or something. And he went, okay, leave it with me. Um, and then he sent a message saying, you've got a year off. Wow. I, I wasn't paid. I, you know, I had yeah. to find money myself. Yeah. Yeah. So I went to Vietnam and I worked with this monk in the pagoda. And I was teaching English, teaching massage um, to these blind people. And then um, this lady came and she said, this monk is so hard working and he really needs his first disciple, his first student sort of thing. And I think you should be it. But he's so humble. Anyway, she went and talked to him and he came back and he said, yeah, I, I agree to it. And he did this ritual and then he gave me my Dharma name, which is uh, Tian Tin. Yeah. Tian Tin. Oh, oh and, that's lovely, uh, yeah. After that, nobody in the everybody in Pagoda, that's the only name they use. Never called me Neil after that. Yeah. So, oh wow. Yeah, so that uh, and I worked with them for about nine months. Did you ever months. go back to corporate after that? I mean, did you ever like you did? Oh God, it was horrendous. <laughs> it was really bad. I had to go back and then I just felt I didn't fit in anywhere. I was with uh, with Louise, the, the main thing I remember, uh, just I'm trying to think now, I remember that um, you were very grounded. Um, yeah, I can. The Akashic Records, right? I knew at one point that Louise had been attuned to the Akashic Records. I just knew it. It's something clicked, and I thought, wow, yeah. that's never happened before. And then I was overcome with like a, like a divinity, like an emotion to stop, sit back and let Louise enjoy it because yeah. it was about her, not for me to keep talking. It was about her to, to get into it. And um, what's the other thing? Oh, yeah, about uh, there was divine feminine, I knew that. And there was something about you channeling. That's when I think when I realized you'd been attuned to the records, that uh, you had to start channeling in some way. That's yeah. that's what I remember. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it felt great afterwards. Uh, you know, it felt great. I went to some was on the beach. I went to the beach. Yeah. So that's a really great reading. 
Well, Louise, that was like a, that was a huge moment in your life, right? So, like from your view, right? From yeah, your, what, like what happened? Like you went through the meditation. It's in the book, cracked open, right? But yeah. um, that was a huge pivotal moment for you. So, describe it from your your side. Yeah, right? well, obviously, it was a big surprise. You know, I wasn't expecting what what happened. Like when I when I found Neil, um, you know, I looked at a few of the testimonials, and I was like, oh yeah, you know, this will give me a lift and. Um, but I wasn't expecting how profound it would be. And um, the meditation itself was just, I can't even begin to put it into words. It was like, I was just flooded with 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 light. It's like looking up, you know, when you're on holidays and you look up at the sun and you feel this beautiful, warm, bright, beautiful feeling, you know, it was like that and um, only magnified like a million times, you know, yeah. it was just pure light. And um, it was absolutely beautiful. I've never, it was the most amazing moment I've ever had in my whole life, honestly. And, um, you know, um, as I say, I wasn't religious before this, although I did have a pull to source. But, um, you know, if, if you want to think of it as religious or not, it doesn't really matter in the end of the day. But um, Well, would you consider yourself spiritual? I mean, like yeah, religion yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. But, you know, Abu introduced themselves to me. It was, they presented as um, two figures during the meditation, which was Jesus Christ, who represented the divine masculine, and his mom, um, Mary, who represented the divine feminine. And it was really yeah. just, it was kind of like a, um, it was mainly her, like she was kind of, although, you know, it was mainly her, like, because it was her who was talking to me. She was kind of saying, the divine feminine is going to start to, you know, um be more you know it needs to come back basically to, to restore us into balance you know but yeah. and she was saying a lot of people will be working on that and you'll be one of them but she you know and she took my hands inside of hers and it was just so beautiful um but I did feel with him with Jesus like it was a very very uh like authoritative uh yeah. presence yeah. and he was just his energy is just so powerful. I can't even describe it. He, he's so, he just knows, like he's mastered the human experience, you know, yeah. even crucifixion and everything like him, he, he mastered all of that. And um, so tuning into him and just, just, just relaxing and tuning into, you know, offering an intention to tune into him is, is really beneficial. Um, and um, yeah, so, so, uh, you know, two days after the the reading, which I was very, very grateful for, it was unexpected. I was surprised and all that. And I didn't really know how to process it. I questioned it for a while and all that. But me, yeah. had, look, you know, start to journal and see what happens, you know. So that was at the meditation. Neil suggested you should start journaling. Yeah, do journaling, you know. Yeah. So I sat down and started to journal, like ask, do like in a QA and a format. Yeah. So I started to do that two days later on the 16th of February. And um, when I asked a question, I said, what, what's because during the meditation, Neil had guided me through like, you know, on the door, there was like, a, he asked me, he said, there's a symbol on the door. What is it? I said, it's a triangle. Yeah. And then I went in and I sat down beside the fire and um, Jesus came in and he asked me like to describe what he was wearing and all of that. And, um, you know, I, I looked into his eyes and it's just unbelievable you know and then he took my hand and brought me back out of there and down through the woods guided by the white rabbit which was the the symbol of rebirth yeah and the white rabbit brought me back into the clearing and then she came out through the mist like we sat on a bench and she took my hands and she had a like um a garment over her head and you know she, she sort of it sort of slipped back and I could see her brown hair uh, brown eyes and she just looked at me and took my hands inside of hers and she it was just unbelievable and then I realized because he stood behind her and I realized she was his mother yeah then I knew who she was you know yeah and then I she she started talking to me and and that was very clear and he was kind of saying I could feel him like he wasn't actually speaking she was the one speaking but I could feel him kind of saying I'll be involved for a while, but it'll be mainly her after that kind of thing, yeah, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. And um their 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 energy, like he he is a gold light. Yes. Yeah. Energy manifests as gold light. 
Yeah. And hers is a pale blue light. And they're there the whole time. I mean, no yeah. matter where I go, when I take pictures, I see this blue and gold light everywhere. And yeah. I know they're with me and it's so comforting. It's beautiful, you know, and um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 you know, and as I say, I just started asking questions. So the first question I answered was, you know, what is this triangle on the door? Yeah. Oh, my, yeah. Neil said it was the Holy Trinity. Am I part of the Holy Trinity? I mean, it was all just kind of innocent questions because I wasn't yeah. really into theology. I didn't know a whole, a whole lot about it. Yeah. Um, and they just started giving me all this information, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, you were and I documenting it. Yeah. The journaling. And then they said, like, a little bit into it, well, uh, you will share these journals in time, you know. Yeah. So that's what happened, you know. So, so Neil, like, while well, Louise is in this, like, really deep meditative state, like, so what do you just, do you just hold the space for her to stay there? Is that what happens? I mean. See, in the, in the readings, not, I don't do a meditation in all the readings. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I just do a reading and it takes an hour. Yeah. Um, some people, you know, I ask at the beginning now if they want to meet their guides. You know, and sort yeah. Of so to, I make a point, right? There's a few things. It's not hypnosis. I don't right. use hypnotic techniques and, yeah. you know, I ask yeah. questions to make sure that they're okay. Yeah. Um, I make a point of not describing somebody's guide to them. Yeah. Because my first guide was, they told me it was this Cistercian monk, there you are, drew a picture of him, and that was it. So I knew who I'd got. But I like the person to describe the guide yeah. to me. Yeah. So I take them to one of these places where I know their the guide is waiting for them. Yeah. I don't know who the guide will be. Yeah. I, I, I didn't realize who, who Louise's guide was going to be. Yeah. Um, and then when they show themselves, I, I'm sort of looking in certain areas. So, like, I, I always look at the feet first. And so yeah. I sort of look at the feet and it's easy yeah. for somebody just yeah. to, to get us down. And then see what happens after that. Or is it a light? Or what, what? tell me what you're seeing. And then after that, I get the picture in my mind and I can work with it and yeah. guide from that. Yeah. And then um, for most people, most people can do it. Some people can't do it. Not yeah. everybody's ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, some people. Journey, little journey, yeah. To see here, see here and feel things along the way just to relax them down so that when they get to the point where they're going to meet their guide, it's gentle. It's, it's yeah. nothing. And I always put protection around them as well. Yeah, yeah. So that not, not that anything could happen. I wouldn't let that happen. But yeah. I always put protection around them and, um, yeah, and then lead them to the guide. And then, yeah. But like yeah, I said, yeah. everybody yeah. gets that in the reading. Yeah. I think, you had, like me personally, you have to go into it with a real open heart and, you know, yes. open to the process, right? Because I remember, like, my guide was my Irish grandmother, who I always was very spiritually connected to, like, you know, as way back as an infant, I remember, like, being very connected. And she was always very spiritually connected, too, as well, because that's just the way she was. Um, and so I wasn't surprised when she came through, but I was delighted. And funny, the funny thing is, we were going out when we were back in Boston back in November, to visit her um, burial site, we went by two streets. One was Louise Street, and then three streets later was Delaney Street. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. <so> like, <laughs> there she is, like talking to us. It was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Because you know? yeah. like yeah. we we would never have gone down that road, right, Louise? We like we never. Yeah, would have yeah. Gone that road. Again, in that reading when she came through, I just felt this amazing sense of love and warmth and like caring and all of that stuff. You know, kind of similar to what you you experienced as well yeah um, was, yeah know. so yeah, uh, yeah it, was, it was very I, I get emails from people saying you know like things have happened like yourself things have yeah. happened or things have moved on and yeah. like uh, there's a couple of ladies that are mentoring through the mediumship yeah One in it's really i think it's really gifted but yeah i just meet her once a month and, and just mentoring her through that I've yeah. got to say as well, it's under Global Akasha. It's not under my name, Neil Burgess. It's under Global Akasha on the internet. Global. Oh, yeah. yeah. Global Akasha, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, there's one lady from America who um, did the reading. She loved it, but I said to her, I have to give you something about 
colour therapy. Yeah. And she laughed at me. And I said, I don't know why I have to give you it. I'm a colour therapist. Yeah. And I cracked a joke. I said, who goes to see a colour therapist? <laughs> Nobody. Nobody goes. <laughs> you don't see the doctor or a healer. Don't. So I said, but there's something about colour therapy you need to know about. I have to give you it. It's important. Anyway, going on for about a year, she ended up, she was only quite young, she ended up having to have a hysterectomy. Oh. And she said that she, there was nothing for her to grieve, no no process or anything. And she remembered, she listened to the reading, and again, she had it recorded. So she asked her husband to bring in all these pencils and paints and everything, and she started and she went on with it, and it really helped her through it. Yeah. yeah. But she didn't stop. She kept going on and realised that there was no nothing like this for grief therapy, like this stuff. So she developed a course, a grief therapy course with, with colour therapy, and she took it to a university of her city. Yeah. And they loved it. So they asked her to develop it more. And now she's on the university circuit and people are buying this course. And she's just written a book on uh, colour therapy for grief. I can't remember what she's called it now, but uh, it's just getting published at the moment. Wow. Oh, so that's fantastic. That's fabulous. That colour therapy yeah. thing. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's a fantastic. I, I story. People like uh -huh. saying, well, oh, this has happened. A funny one was uh, this is really, really recent. This is why I remember it. We're talking about man manifesting things. So I was telling this lady how to manifest, and I, the example I gave was because I had a pen in my hand. I said, if you want a pen, this is how and we, we would talk to her anyway. She uh, contacted me a week later and said, I can't believe, oh, it was a follow-up session that did with her. She said, I can't believe what's happened. She said, uh, I was thinking about manifesting a pen just to because it was an easy thing to do. She said, and I went to a shoe shop. And when I went to the counter, this box had fallen over. And I picked it up and said, free pens. <laughs> <laughs> she said it, it was just so amazing because she'd been thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's actually a good lead in, right? Because there's a lot of talk about creation and manifestation and like, what are the keys to it and all of that, right? Well, why don't we just ch chat about that for a few minutes, right? So like, yeah. what do you think? I mean, well, in terms of like creation, manifestation. I, I was manifesting right in the UK and I didn't even know I was doing it. And yeah. so somebody said to me, I think it was my teacher said, how do you do that? Yeah. And I said, what's when you ask for something and it's there within a couple of days. And she was saying, I ask for it now. Maybe you have to wait six months. So <laughs> you can do it. Yeah. And for me, there's, there's a few key elements to it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have to start small yeah that's why i say about the pen yeah because it's like the muscle people start saying uh, they want two thousand euros yeah, yeah and then yeah. after a couple of days they give up on it yeah so money is not a good thing to manifest that there's a different way to do that yeah so the thing is you have to i'm a big believer in thought word deed so yes. you have to put it in writing yeah so i always make a list and if there's something negative on the list, I turn it into a positive. So say the pen example. Yeah. Say I didn't want a red pen. It's yeah. just say not red. Because once you put the emphasis on not red, that's what you're going to get a red pen. Yeah. So I think, okay, so if it's like not small, big, if it's not red, blue, you have to put it in a positive way. Yeah. So I make the list out, and I always, for me, I always have it on the kitchen table. So now I'm going to pass a few times a day. And like when I was manifesting Sombat, yeah. <laughs> I just kept adding to it. Yeah. And I was very picky. Everything, everything you can think of. It's like if you're ordering something from Amazon, you yeah. look to see exactly what you want. You don't just order a, a generic thing. You look to see all the things are right. Like a car, manifested a car. I went online and looked at all the specifications of the car. Yeah. And then I said what mileage it had to be, under what price range, everything like that. Because I was in Thailand and I wanted a blue Audi in yeah. London when I went back. Yeah. And I got it. It was, it was at the Audi store. The first time they'd ever sold a second-hand car, they said. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so 
And then the last thing is you have to, people say, oh, it's uh, it's believing. You have to believe in it. Yeah. No, it's more than that. You have to know. Yeah. You have to know it. Yeah. And it's like when you order from Amazon, you don't believe that you're going to get your order. You know it's coming. You just leave it. So as an example, when I was in Vietnam, I wanted yeah. to extend the visa. Yeah. And the, this guy told me about this massacre. I'm qualified myself as well. Told me about this massage place, this this resort I'm looking for at Massa Massa. Um, so I phoned them up and said, "Oh, phone us tomorrow." But you, you sound exactly what we want. Yeah. Back to my apartment, got the heebie-jeebies. Thought I don't know where this place is. It might be horrible. The bosses might be horrible. I might be locked yeah. in a room without windows all day. Phone back next day. No, we've got somebody for it. Somebody yeah. else. And then yeah. I got offered another post the next week. This woman who was uh, opening a shop, and the same thing happened. She wanted me to sign a two-year contract. Went back to the apartment and thought, I can't read Vietnamese, right? You know, what if it's a two-year contract? And what if it's a ten-year contract? Right. Um, it just all fizzled away, and that was a yeah. big lesson I learned. Don't think about it. Once you've ordered it, you don't think about it. Yeah. So you basically put it out there, internalize it, right? And you get, it sounds like you have to be a bit specific too. It can't be something oh, too Oh, very, very specific. specific. And then just leave it because it's out there. So, and... but the ritual bit I've missed out, right? This yeah. is my own ritual that I do. So I have, I make a list, say like yeah. this. Yeah. And then what I do is I, when, I, when it's perfect, when I know it's right, yeah. I go outside. Oh, go! The reason I didn't realize why it's outside in a minute. Yeah, but I just hold it up and say, "This is my order. It's coming to me within a week." Yeah, depending how big it is, coming to yeah. me but in a week, and then I burn it. Oh, okay. All right. So it's out there. The burning is the enter button. Yeah. Thanks, right. And then that's it. Yeah. And then I just think. Well, it'll be coming to me. The the last thing that I visualized like this, I manifested. I'd ordered uh, my twenty year visa for Thailand, yeah. yeah, and it was taking so long. I thought, oh, I'm not getting it, and I'm not getting it. And I was sat asking my guides, and they went, "If you want to be certain, you know what you have to do, manifest it." Yeah. So I wrote down exactly what I wanted. Went outside, burnt it. There's my order. Yeah. The next day, I went to the gym. My gym's on the sixth floor in the hotel. Yeah. And my sign, one of my signs, is a white feather. And he's a white feather on the cab in the middle of the hotel, no birds or anything. Yeah. Thank you. And then when I, I went on the jogging machine thing, a white feather came down the window. And I, Thank you. The next yeah. day, I got the Oh, wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. That's so I yeah. totally, you have to know, rather than believing, you have to know. Yeah. Don't yeah. think about if you think about it, you put the heebie jeebies on it. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's the hard part, right? It's just putting it out yeah. there and then knowing, right? And not yeah. like thinking about and it. Don't, the don't try and manifest money. No. Like I've yeah. tried like, and I yeah. can't do it. It's another way to manifest money. So. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. What do you think, Louise, like in, in terms of creation and manifestation? And yeah, that's that's really interesting what Neil said there about yeah. the fire. Because um, Amu wrote some specifics about fire as well, the element of fire. Well, yeah. Tell you what, what that really works on. When I was first starting as a medium, doing my circle, we got this medium, and I got really, I got really bad eczema on my arms, and I yeah. got like sick. And I went to see my teacher, who, who very, very, I want to see very high up in the medium, in the spiritualist. Yeah. yeah. Um, she said to you, she tuned in. She said, somebody in your circle is hypnotizing you uh, while you're still in trance. They are telling you bad things and they are bringing you down. They yeah. Don't bring you down they don't want you to succeed. Listen, you will hear it the next time. So the next circle meeting, this woman's telling me that I had a noose around my neck. Oh, my God. And then I had a black hole in the aura. And so after they went, the next day, I sat and I got a piece of paper and I thought, right, write down everything she said, just start writing. Yeah. And I had a great big list of all the things. And she called me while I was writing that list out. 
And she said, what are you doing? Because my guide said, you're doing something bad, aren't you? You're not doing anything. Yeah. yeah. And lied. But, and then I finished the list, went outside, burnt it. Yeah. And then phoned her up and told her what I'd done and told her she wasn't welcome anymore. And yeah. She's yeah. bad and she's a bit nasty, but she left and the eczema cleared up and I was fine. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. That it is, is amazing. amazing. Yeah. So yeah. if you've got somebody yeah. that's depressing you or draining your energy or doing stuff like that, try and write down what they're saying to you and then burn it, get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because they they that's really that's really good that you, you talk about that, Neil, because, you know, yeah. fire, fire gets a bad rap, you know. Yeah, no, when, fire's when, really yeah, good. Really fire's good. Yeah, when you think about I it. I uh, violet flame a lot to clear people. Yeah. 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 And I had a meditation at one point and a, a dragon came through. Um, it was it was an archetype, obviously, but it was, you know, the fire coming out of the dragon was clearing away all of the the bad, um, well, the 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 obstructions, let's say, in my energy field, you know, and um, it it helped a lot. Um, so fire, they, they were trying to help me to rebalance my idea about fire because fire is not a bad thing, you know, it gets, obviously mm-hmm. fire can burn, you know, can can cause problems if a building fire goes. Fire just fire. It's fire, fire. fire. Yeah. exactly, exactly, yeah. 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 So yeah. it's kind of reframing it in your mind, you know. Yeah. yeah. But that's really good. I must start doing that myself now. But the, the opposite of love isn't hate, it's fear. And that's what all the news exactly. media, everything like that is created. Yeah. yeah. Hate, uh, fear, sorry. Fear, and yeah. More, it's the opposite of love. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I I don't buy into all that now. I yeah. I mean, I look at a few things that's something in the UK, I just think that it's just the same old story over and over and over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it feels so, like, it feels in some ways like if you focus on the media, it feels like we're going around in circles a lot, you know. But, all the time, all the time. Yeah. yeah, I think that's where the discipline comes in. Like we have to be, we have to be, as you say, Neil, like you know, skilled in holding the light and living it. Yeah, regardless of what's going on around us, you know, and it's hard, but we have we have to do we have to be able to do it, you know. Um, yeah, and I think it's trying to pivot away from the fear, right? It's yeah, pivoting away from Finding somebody fear. or something that you love. Yeah. And focus and get that love out of you because that's all we have. That's all yeah. the, men, the, the fight that we have. Yeah. 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 And women are going to be the saviors, I think. Yeah. <laughs> well, I... Women <laughs> arise and... Yeah, yeah, that's another like that's another great lead into the uh, divine feminine, right? And that seems to be a big theme out there right now, sort of rebalancing of energies. So I think we can take a few minutes talking about the divine feminine, right? Because it's not just females, right? Everybody has 50-50, and I think Amu says that, right, Louise? 50-50 yeah. masculine feminine energy. And we need to get back to sort of a balance because there's too much masculine energy out there right now. Yeah. 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 I, I'm, I'm frightened of, like, mansplaining. <laughs> I always have this thing about it, but the, the one thing, one sentence that really says it all for me is yeah. the only portal for a human soul to get onto the planet is a woman. Yeah. That's it. Well, yeah. That, yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's your only way. Exactly. That is. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, it was International Women's Day recently, and I was like, what was I like it? We were on yeah. holidays and I was I had I was very sad because I was like, is it really international? Like in the end of the day, what about the girls in Afghanistan who've been taken out of education? What about, you know, all of the awful things that are happening to women all over the world? You know, you can't really say everywhere, it's everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. It's if not it was, yeah. Yeah. I sure. Sure. Mary's choices goes into all of that massively. And you Maybe know this book. No, this one. <laughs> this one. Oh, that's another one. Yeah, but it goes into a big time, like about how sacred the whole process is, and that when a woman is um, carrying another soul in their body, like I mean, the first thing to grow is the heart, and the, yeah. and the heart is where the light of source resides. 
So they are literally, as a woman is is holding that in her body, she is literally uh, transmitting twice the divine energy through her that she, or three times if she's carrying yeah. twins that she normally. And then she allows a soul to come through. Yeah. And it's a body be used all the the things yeah. in her body to be drained off to to for this new baby. Yeah. yeah. It's unbelievable. And then she goes through the pain of it all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a massive sacrifice, like huge. Yeah, you know, it is. Yeah, it is. I, I, I haven't had kids um, in my own life, but I see what my it, it gave me a huge appreciation for my own mother, and it also like looking at my sisters and that, and what they're juggling, you know, with you know, uh, birthing new life, looking after and preparing new life, you know, and yeah. all of that, the maternal instinct, and all of that's involved in that. Yeah. Plus trying to work and trying to do everything else, you know. I mean, it's huge, like, and it's underappreciated in society. I mean, it's really I is. totally agree. I'm with you yeah. there. Yeah, I agree too. It's totally huge. agree. It's, yeah. Um, it's a huge, huge thing. Which you know, um I think I think women are rising again, and I think that yeah. the patriarchy are frightened of it, and I think that's why there's certain things in place eroding women's rights. Like the abortion laws, the trans rights thing. I think there's all things in play to take away women's rights so that they don't rise. Yeah. Or, I mean, you will. You will rise. Yeah, yeah. It sure seems it sure seems that way, honestly. I think men as well are going to really start to get in touch with their feminine energy body. You know, they're yeah. start gonna start to really tune into that as well. And like as a, as a collective species, like regardless of your gender or how you identify, I think it's going to start to start rising. You know, the feminine energy body is just going to start to um, come out of its shell, let's say, after a long time, you know, and, and hopefully balance things out, you know. Yeah, and that, I think that should help women as well, right? Because it would be another yeah. support. Yeah, you know? yeah. Let's hope anyway, so. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But yeah, because um, not, not that, I mean, men are wonderful and beautiful and there's so many wonderful things that men have created and everything you know it's just that and that they're an integral part of the, of the, the procreation process and, and a lot of other processes you know but um it's just i think the expression of the masculine energy is lopsided you know it's gone too yeah. far where the competitive part and things like that has just gone too far and the power over and you know um we just need to get back to balance, balance again, you know. But, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, great okay. conversations, guys. <laughs> yeah, this is a great conversation. Yeah. It's great. So yeah. I think well, well, well. Go ahead, Neil. Sorry. I was just going to say, just uh, I don't know to break this, but I'm like, so I'm on a break at the moment, and um, so like taking time out. I was told by spirit to change things up for the yeah. cash ingredients. Yeah. So I, I don't actually know yet how it's going to be. It won't be in the same format as they were. Yeah. Uh, and I won't be doing as many because I'm getting on a bit now. I need yeah. time for my own soul growth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. the people I feel like it's time I need to feel, feed my own soul a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, so what I want to say is if if people try and book and they see that it's it's fully booked or it's blocked, yeah, that's for a reason. Yeah, um, but uh, they, they want to contact me. They can. There's a link on on the website. But, yeah, uh, it's just don't be offended if I turn you down. It's, it, I'm working on myself at the moment. Um, if I feel that I can connect with you and help you rise up or whatever, I will. Yeah, but but I've got to say that because if people see the, the podcast and then try and contact, and I don't want everybody to be disappointed. I just yeah. be honest, really. Yeah, yeah, that's fair no, enough. That, yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, so like if people did want to drop you a line, Neil, how would they get get in touch with you? It's just globalakasha at gmail dot com. Okay. That's how do people get in touch with you? Like, once you share. Um, yeah, like so it. I just put together a website over yeah. the last couple of months. Uh, it's yeah. called eternaluniverse.com. In terms of like, the, you've had some big things lately, right? So you have an audio book out. Where can people find that? Um, yeah, so the audio book of, of the first book, Cracked Open, um, was narrated by Tara Dominic uh, in the UK. 
She used to work in the BBC. She has an absolutely beautiful voice. She's like an angel. Her voice is gorgeous. Yeah, it's beautiful. So anyway, I'm delighted with that. So yeah. people can find that on Apple Books, on Amazon, and Audible. Oh it's going to be um, it's going to be great because people can just download it and they, they don't have any delivery costs or anything. But Tara was just the perfect fit, you know, and um, it was one of those divine appointments. I mean, we yeah, both that. Yeah. <laughs> the voice was well, so the yeah. voice was perfect for that. Yeah. yeah. So the books can be found on Amazon, right? And all, the, all the books, the books themselves on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. The and then the audio book, iTunes, Audible, and Amazon. Yeah. And there's more audio books coming. Yeah, Tara is working on like the next two. Um, we had to take a break after the first one because it was such a huge piece of work. Yeah. Um. So she's she's going to start the the next one, the missing piece, next week. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she's trying to work on this project as well as do a lot of other things. So, yeah. yeah. It's very grateful to be working with her, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Why don't we just, why don't we leave it there, you know? And then yeah. I, what I want to say is, Neil, thanks a million.